In this video, we'll take a look at how one can do proactive wireless testing using 1800S active sensors on DNA Center Assurance. Let's talk about a typical use case where your wireless network is being managed remotely and how one can use these active sensors to quickly identify and resolve potential connectivity issues before a user even know they exist. These active sensors actually act like a wireless client where it will identify issues in real time without requiring an IT or a technician being on site. These active sensors interact directly with DNA Center and does not join any wireless LAN controller. Let's see how easy it is for these active sensors to discover DNA Center. The most commonly used option is DHCP option 43 or one can even use by resolving special host name called PNP server from DNS server or by using manual CLI using the console cable. These active sensors use wired or wireless backhaul interface to communicate with DNA center. For example, if you are using a PoE adapter, you will be using a wired backhaul or if you are using AC adapter power module or a USB module, you will be using a wireless backhaul. If these active sensors are able to discover the DNA center successfully, it would show up under provision, devices and plug and play in the unclaimed state. Let's quickly see how easy it is to claim and provision these active sensors. So you can select these active sensors which you want to claim and then go to actions and then click on claim and select the site to which you want to assign these sensors. And then you can click on since I'm going to assign all these four sensors to the same side and click on next and you need to select the configuration which is the wireless backhaul configuration so one can do that by clicking on the sensor device name and in the drop down you can select the Cisco sensor provisioning which is a default option or you can also create your own new backhaul SSID under assurance. So in this case I'm selecting the default one which is Cisco sensor provisioning and click on save and then apply the same settings to the other active sensors and then click on apply and then go to next and then let me claim these active sensors. We can see that all the four active sensors are successfully claimed and provisioned. Let's go ahead and click on one of the active sensor and go to the history tab here. So we can see all the events that happen during the claim process. So this information is pretty useful when you're uh, debugging an issue. So now that we have successfully provisioned the sensors, let's go to the Assurance tab and see what is the current state of the sensors there. So one has to go to uh, Assurance, Manage and then Sensor List here. So we can see that all the sensors are in the running state and uh, they are all currently using the wired backhaul. In case if the active sensors are not able to reach DNA Center, via the wired backhaul, they'll try to use the wireless backhaul which we used during the claim process. And one more interesting feature I want to showcase here is uh, one can enable SSH on these active sensors from DNA Center. So if you're troubleshooting any issue, you don't no longer need a console cable, you can just go ahead and enable SSH from here. And then assign a password and then click on save so you can go ahead and directly SSH uh, onto the active sensor directly now that all our active sensors are up and running let's quickly go ahead and see how easy it is to go ahead and create a sensor test one has to go to assurance manage sensors and click on test templates 
and then click on add sensor test give a name to your template and then these are the list of auto populated SSIDs from the WLCs which DNA Center is managing click on next and uh, this is the uh, security credentials and click on next and these are the list of tests which you are telling the active, active sensors to go ahead and run so there are a whole lot of onboarding tests RF assessment related tests and uh, the performance tests like speed test and IPSLA and also reachability tests as well go to next and then we need to select the AP coverage as to how many target APs you want to uh, you want the active sensor to go ahead and connect and run these tests against and you can select the bands as well whether you want to run on uh, the 2.4 or 5 gigahertz bands click on next and the interesting part is it will even give you the estimate of the time as to how long it will take to run these tests create test so now that you've created the template one can deploy to different locations so you can tell which location you want to run this uh, test template against so I have selected San Francisco which means that all the active sensors which are assigned to San Francisco side will take up this test template and then run the test and this is basically a schedule as to how often you want to run these tests I can do schedule every week or I can do periodic every one hour and then click on next and this is just confirming the summary and then go ahead and deploy the test so now that I've created the test and assigned to a specific location all I have to do is just click on run now and then my test will start running in case if you want to make changes to your test template one can do that by clicking on the test template and then clicking on edit where you can edit and add more SSIDs or you can add more tests to your current network let's go ahead and take a look at the sensor dashboard this dashboard gives us a holistic view of all the test results that's been run by your active sensors and we store information for the last 14 days here and one can also do time travel where you can go back in time and look up the test results as well and there are multiple filters where you can look up information for a specific site or you want to look up for a specific SSID or a band as well so this is the overall summary of all the test results so uh, in case if you want to look up deeper after clicking here we can see that uh, 3% of failure of our FTP test and uh, that is due to the connection failure and this is the heat map of all the test results of all the sensors on your network and one can also do uh, search the sensors in case if you're having quite a uh, large number of sensors on your network this, this is pretty useful tool as well and we also show the worst performing sensor because uh, this is where the most number of tests has been failing and one can also edit the threshold values as well also there is an option to look at the card view a different perspective of your test results let's take a look at the sensor 360 page so this is a specific 
a sensor 360 page for a particular sensor and then it gives you again a holistic view of all the test results for a particular sensor and you can look up the heat map and there is also a sensor performance trend where you can compare this specific sensor to the the top performing sensor and the worst performing sensor also there is a option to look up the neighbor APs so this is the active sensor and these are the neighbor APs which this active sensor is able to see and at what SS what or what RSSA value as well we not only show the test results here we also do the closed loop where we even generate an issue and then notify the administrator as well so let's see that uh, we can see that information under issues so if there are if there is any failure of test we not only show it there what we also do is we immediately raise an alert saying that uh, some of the sensor tests have been failing so which will give a uh, insight to the administrator.